Did you know that God wants us to connect with the powerful and timeless things he has done in the past so that we can become empowered for the future? Join us as we reveal God's ultimate goals for each of us today on God Knows. God knows. We are so blessed today to have some of our dear, dear friends and family willing to have one Ford. Welcome. Thank you. And Thank you boy, us. what a story we have. We have such a story, but let's let you know a little bit about Will and DeHavlin. Uh, and uh, you'll see that they really are history makers. In fact, he just happened to write a book with this guy. Dutch Sheets, they co-authored History Makers, and you're going to hear some of their story. Maybe some of you saw our show earlier, uh, the shows that we did with Dutch Sheets. But Will Ford uh, is an intercessor, and he also is the new director of Marketplace Ministries, is that what we call yeah, market, it? Yeah, director of Marketplace Leadership Major. Yeah. Leadership Major yeah. at Christ of the Nations yeah. Bible Institute, the very first semester. Yep. Yeah, no pressure, but yep. <laughs> getting started there, that's a lot of curriculum yes, to develop right there, but, but it's very historic to have that. And, you know, he has written other books, created for influence, and produced two DVDs, The Truth Behind Abortion, Truth Behind the Black Church. And, you know, he's been on many television shows and interviewed, and he's just a great speaker, great prophet. And to Haviland, you started eight. 18, right? Yes, ma'am. And uh, that is from Isaiah 818, right? Yes. Yeah. And so what is that verse? My people it's, are... Uh, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. And it's in reference to um, the ending of abortion in the black community in America. Wow, yeah. That the child is the sign. Wow, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's a pretty interesting topic. In a later show, we want to get into that yeah. for sure. And, and the prayer movement and the African American church in the United States, pretty exciting stuff yes, happening. A new generations are arising. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this book, History Makers, you tell some interesting stories of this that we have right here, this black kettle. How old is this kettle? Uh, well, it's close to 200 years old. Mm. Oh my goodness. Close to 200 years old. Yeah. And, and what is this? Well, basically it was used by the slaves of my family. They, they used it for cooking. They would use it for washing clothes, but secretly they, they used it for prayer. Um, and honestly, I hadn't thought much about it until I went to a conference in <laughs> Colorado Springs, Colorado. That was a number of years yeah, ago. Right? Yeah, back in like 2001. Wow. And uh, didn't know a soul there. And uh, this little lady named Cindy Jacobs was <laughs> praying and prophesying over a guy named Dutch Sheets and another young man named Billy Olsten. And she started you know, prophesying they go to Williamsburg, Virginia to do prayer and revival meetings. And she stops and she says, hold up, there's something to this because Dutch, his real name is William. Of course, Billy, his real name is William. Here Which nobody should call Dutch William. Yes, don't okay, do that. that yeah. No, no, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, so she was like, what does William mean? So I just kind of blurred out and said, it means noble spirit, resolute protector. She said, that's right, who said that? I kind of <laughs> poked my hand up, kind of scared. <laughs> and she said, you're William too, I pray. Yeah, you, you're William too, aren't you? Get down here, it's too white anyway. Come on down here. <laughs> now, right. now stop for just a second. That. Mm -hmm. Say that again so they'll understand what that name means. Because that's a yes. really significant. Yeah, uh, noble spirit, resolute protector. So basically, this is someone that, that I try to live up to, to be a person of character and nobility and uh, someone who cares about taking care of others. And it was resolute in their stance. So anyway, so, so we're there and we don't know each other, but the Spirit of God falls on all three of us. We just begin weeping over each other. It was amazing. Never met each other before. And then Dutch looks up at me with tears in his eyes and mm -hmm. says, I think you're supposed to do this prayer journey to Williamsburg when we do it. And so later that day, Dutch does this uh, teaching on synergy and how not only can we agree in prayer with those next to us, we can also come in agreement with the prayers of a generation behind us. Mm. So that means that the people that you, like in your legacy, in your past ancestors, not only your own individual ancestors, your family, 
but even leaders of nations and people like that who have prayed prayers yes. for, for you, those prayers are still alive. Those prayers are still alive. And, uh, it, you know, it's like with uh, Hebrews 11, 39 and 40, it says, all these by faith, they were approved for their faith, but they didn't receive what was promised. Mm. So that apart from us, they wouldn't be made perfect without us. Mm. So there's this whole generation of people looking over the balcony of heaven and say, hey, mm. Mike and Cindy, to heaven and the will, don't mess this thing up because God started something in us that he wants to complete exponentially through you. Jesus said the best. He said, greater works than these are you going to do because I'm going to the Father. And so he'll start something in one generation and complete it exponentially through future generations. Mm. So it brought me back to this kettle because I remembered how this kettle was used in my family. Like I said, they were uh, owned by this uh, very wicked slave master in Lake Province, Louisiana, who would beat him for any reason, and praying was one of them. So back then... Hard to believe. Yeah, hard to believe, <laughs> but uh, back then they wanted slaves to be Christians because they knew that Christian slaves made better workers, but they pervert the gospel and say, mm -hmm. slaves be obedient to your masters if you want to go to heaven. Wow. And so, yeah, and, and if slaves prayed, they actually would, would, would beat them because they didn't want to, to foster hope. And then also, too, there were insurrections that were going around as well. Mm. But it's been well documented. If you look through some of the uh, na slave narratives, uh, many times slaves were beaten just for having prayer meetings, sometimes beaten to death. Wow. And so this man who owned our family there would actually beat them if you heard him praying. He, mm. he was so cruel, we had a, a great uncle that went fishing one time without asking. When he came back on the plantation, he thought I'd make an example out of him. So he strapped him to a tree and uh, beat him until all the, you know, just his mm. flesh would just pull out of his back. And mm. so that's mm. how cruel this man was. Mm. But in spite of this man's cruelty mm. and because of their love for Jesus Christ, mm. they prayed anyway. Wow. They go into a barn late at night, take this black kettle pot in there with them, and they turn it upside down and prop it up with rocks so it'd be suspended off the ground about an inch or so. They lay flat on the ground and put their lips in between the opening between the ground and the kettle so that the kettle will muffle their voices as they pray through the night. Wow. And the story they passed down with this pot is this, is that they didn't think they would see freedom in their time, so they prayed for the freedom of their children in the next generation. And that was the word that when I called you up at Dutch's conference years ago, the word was God is getting ready to answer the prayers of your forebearers through you. Yep. And um, that's what just wasted you. And I remember you were just weeping and weeping. And I was thinking, wow, that is a big reaction to that oh, word. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I, I was, yeah, I was a wreck. Had yeah. you considered that before? No, you know, and honestly, that was before Dutch gave the message on synergy. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff, and then he wow. gave his message mm -hmm. and everything just came together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this young teenage girl, she decided to keep that pot and this story in our family. We don't know what her name is to this day, but she's the first one that freedom came to. Aww. So can you imagine what it must have felt like to be the recipient of all these other people's secret prayer meetings? I all those can't years. Really. So she's it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, she's probably thinking about all those who are dead and gone. She's yeah. probably thinking about all those who are too old to enjoy the freedom she's about to embrace. Wow. So she passed this down to wow. Harriet Lockett. Amazing. All the martyrs yeah, in the passed it down to Harriet Lockett. Harriet Lockett gave it to Noah Lockett. Noah Lockett gave it to William Ford Sr. William Ford Jr. And then my, my father, William Ford Jr. said that he was, he remember being five years old and Harriet Lockett telling him the story about how the slaves prayed in this pot while he washed clothes in this with his feet. Back then they didn't have washing machines. He just trumped clothes. Aww. And she would tell him the story how the slaves prayed for, for his freedom in there. Oh, that and makes he, me feel weepy. Yeah. Oh. And so then he, he, gave, he gave it to me, William III. And so think about it. There was a whole remnant. There was a remnant back then of white Christian abolitionists and black Christian slaves that prayed into being the first and the second great awakening. Mm. And had it not been for those revivals, slavery would have never ended in this nation. So I think God left this for us as a reminder of the prayer bowls in heaven and a reminder that the same God who broke the power of Dred Scott, he can break the power of Roe v. Wade. He can put an end to the gang violence that we're seeing going on in the inner cities. He can bring a healing to, between this rift between the races that the enemy is trying to bring right now, yeah. between black, white, and brown. Yeah. Listen, I just believe that God wants to have us unite right now like never before to see the prayer bowls in heaven tipped over America, tipped over Guatemala, tipped over Russia, tipped over, there's a prayer bowl over every nation is yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think there's a global harvest that God wants to release. I in do this too. Hour, and so. awakening. Yes. Uh, and a global awakening. You know, some of those things that Will was talking about, Roe versus Wade, Dred Scott, these were, these were 
decisions our Supreme Court made that mm -hmm. one uh, legalized abortion, Dred Scott was separate, yeah, but Dred, Dred, equal, they yeah, called it. Well, yeah, Dred Scott was uh, basically the, the, the Supreme Court case that everybody thought filled the, sa the, the, the state of slavery in America and thought, hey, this thing is never going to turn, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it basically said that, this, that, that, that the slave had no rights in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, just just horrible. Oh, that was the board of directors versus yeah. something. The separate Brown versus the board yeah, of Brown education. Versus, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, but, but, so, you came to Dutch after this, this word, God's going to answer the prayers of your forebearers mm -hmm. through you. He preached center to the ages. And yeah. then could you go to Williams birth with him? Uh, Virginia, yeah. which is very historic in our history in the U S here, you know, mm -hmm. for our, our freedom fight. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you offered to do something, didn't you? Bring yeah. We this, offered to bring this yeah. along and we thought, he thought, wow, you know, should we even, who would do something like that, you know? And, yeah. and didn't want people to, you know, take it the wrong way. And so he was praying, said, God, do you really want me to take a kettle pot around the country <laughs> throughout New England and the Northeast to pray for revival? Mm -hmm. So he and Lou Engle were together and they were talking about this. And then Dutch's Bible fell open to Zechariah 14 and, and 20, which says, and the cooking pots in the house of the Lord <laughs> oh. should be like the bowls before the altar. Oh. So here's this cooking pot that's caught multiple prayers. The same as a bowl in heaven that catches our prayers like incense. Wow. So Dutch came back to me later on. He said, Will, wouldn't it just be like God and his justice and irony that he used the prayers of a slave generation to free a nation up for revival again? Wow. And so I believe that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Did you write about that in History Makers? Yeah, all that's yeah. In, in the book History yeah. Makers. Yeah. You know, this is, an, this is an incredible journey. And so they took this black kettle. Did you take it like all across the East Coast? You went to Williamsburg? Yeah, with the, uh, all throughout New England and the Northeast. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to Harvard? Yes, we did you go went to, to Harvard. Harvard yeah, University? went to a lot of the Ivy League schools, uh, Princeton, Brown, and. Uh, yeah, it was amazing, amazing. Yeah, uh, I, in dream. fact, I was there when you were in Williamsburg, Virginia, and you went to the site of the first black church in the city. Yes. And this was turned over for the mm -hmm. first time, and they held it up, and I was going, oh, Lord, don't let them drop it, because <laughs> you and Dutch crawled underneath and prayed yeah. underneath this kettle together, black and white. I mean, we prayed under this kettle together, black, white, red. I mean, we had Native American pastors with us there, yeah. too. Uh, we washed feet in this kettle pot of different places, you know, it's all the races. It was, it was an incredible thing, and, and now here we are. Uh, working together, Christ for the Nations. Now he's too. the director of Christ for the Nations, and you're the director of this new marketplace third year school. It's yeah. full circle, isn't it? It really is. And it was the marketplace people back during that time. They were the ones that were the spearheads for revival. I mean, you and know. The and, 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 and the abolitionist yeah, movement. And the abolitionist movement, yeah. Charles Finney, a lawyer, Jeremiah Lenfear, businessman, starts a little uh, a prayer meeting there in New York. I mean, it goes nationwide. A million people is swept into the kingdom of God because these people in the marketplace got used in a profound way. Yeah. You know, I just, well, as we've been talking, I have over and over had this sensing that that there are some people watching this show, and you know, maybe you're from the West Indies, and and uh, you're you're there in in England, or you're Afro Caribbean, or, or Afro Canadian, or whatever it is, but you are just gripped by this story, and the spirit of God is just all over this thing for you, you know. Uh, and we were talking about. Uh, being assigned to a generation. Yes. God has been speaking to us over and over that there are young black leaders worldwide that God's going to use for awakening. Mm -hmm. That this is a new generation. This is something so unique. And I feel like the Lord is showing me, Will, that when you made that prayer journey, those seeds that are in the ground started not only a movement there in the Northeast, but it's a worldwide movement. Well, I would and see 
see that. And that it's going to affect, and that there you are at Christ of the Nations, and what there are at least 50 or 60 nations wow. represented there at the school here in Dallas. Mm. But God is going to take these prayers and empty them out now upon a whole generation. So I want you just to, for a second, I want you to look into the set, and I'd like both of you to pray and just yeah. raise up that generation. All right. <laughs> and, and here's what I want to tell you, too. Look, if my ancestors have been Muslims or Buddhists, I have no connection to this part of its history. But because they were Christians, not only these my ancestors are forefathers of yours, too. In other words, I'm just as much a spiritual son of Jonathan Edwards as you are of William Seymour. That makes sense because we're connected by the blood of Christ. So let's just pray right now and just agree. Father, we just come right now in agreement with you, Lord with the prayers of all those who've gone before us, Lord. Just like Elijah cried out and said, where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of William Seymour? Where is the God of Jonathan Edwards? Where is the God of Amy Simple McPherson? God, we ask you right now that you would tip the bowls of heaven right now over uh, every nation, Lord. Mm -hmm. God, where people have been crying out for freedom, where people have been crying out for awakening. Well, we ask that you, Lord, once again, on these old stones, releasing the new fire for the next generation. Well, we got... Uh, more information than we've ever had before with uh, 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 the internet and everything else. We don't need persuasive words of wisdom, God. We need power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, something that's more powerful and compelling than MTV or BET or uh, Twitter and Facebook. God, would you raise up a generation that seeks your face in Jesus' name? Yeah, Amen. and I just want to speak to a generation of young people that maybe you don't know your history. Maybe you don't, there's nothing that's been passed down to you, but Jesus has passed down something. There's a prayer bowl over your life yes. and the Lord wants to tip it in Africa. He wants to tip it in China. Mm -hmm. He wants to tip it all over the nation. And will you become that, you become the intercessor. So we just just pray right now for you that God would spark a fire in your heart, yes. that you would begin to find your destiny in Him and even your inheritance and your legacy, that you would leave something because you may be saying, well, I don't, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know, but I just pray from this program, God would begin to open up your heart and your eyes to what He has for you mm -hmm. in your own personal destiny. Amen. Amen. You know, and I see some people and you're just shaking under the power of God. And the Lord says, mark this day, mark this day. For God says today you are marked as a sign for a generation. The Lord is saying, yes, you are called to be a revivalist. Yes, you are called to release holiness into a generation, to be one that is a change agent and be a history maker. You know what? Will and Havlin and Mike, it's time not just to talk about being a history maker or sing about it, but to be a history maker. Amen. This is really, really important. And I feel that, you know, that we need to just tag on to that. All of us really are history makers. The, the question is, what kind of history will we write? Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because all of you out there, you're writing a history right now as you live your life day by day. And you know, if you look in the Bible and you see these stories of these people who rose to the top in a time of need and did something magnificent, if, if you look at that, was just maybe like a day or two days of their life sometimes, sometimes just a few moments of their life. So the, the thing that's so outstanding about them is not only that they rose to the top, the reason they were able to rise to the top is that day by day, they were building a legacy for the future. They were building a legacy for us. Even today, those who lived generations and generations ago, and we can take joy and comfort in that. Yeah, you're going to yes. be a history maker. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to come back and we're going to make some modern day history. We're going to prophesy over you in just a minute. Get the word of the Lord. You're going to take it and you're going to change some things for your nation, your neighborhood, your family. Get ready to come back and hear the word of the Lord. And we're going to tell you what God knows about your life. So stay tuned. Did you know that God wants us to connect with the powerful and timeless things He has done in the past so that we can become empowered to impact the future? Now in their book, History Makers, Will Ford and Dutch Sheets explain why we must look to our biblical forerunners and pray for the renewal of the covenants God made with them. As you read its pages, you'll discover the powerful effect of joining our prayers with the prayers of those who have gone before us and how it moves us toward God's ultimate goals for each of us. 
You'll also learn how God ordained that you should thrive because of the countless opportunities for prayer and revival present in this day and time. And you'll gain understanding of how to connect your prayers to the past, shaping the outcome of the future and turning it back in God's direction. As a thank you for your special gift of $20 or more, Mike and Cindy want to send you a copy of History Makers by Will Ford and Dutch Sheets. They also want you to have a copy of Cindy's CD, How to Hear God's Voice, a practical and biblical message that explains how to discern God's voice and follow His leading. It's the faithful financial support of friends like you that enables Cindy and Mike to take the prophetic Word of God to so many searching hearts around the world. And your gifts help keep the God Knows television program coming to you every week. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. And as our thank you, we'll send you Will Ford's and Dutch Sheets book, History Makers, along with Cindy's message on CD, How to Hear the Voice of God. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. Hi, welcome back. The Holy Spirit is just moving so beautifully. I see a young man and you are in England and you have been gripped by the story of William Booth and the Salvation Army. And you have just been saying, God, use me to burn like Booth. Give me souls, give me souls. And you just can't believe it that you've turned on the television set on God knows and here we're talking to you. The Lord says, that is your call. You are called to be a revivalist. God's gonna give you a harvest of souls. Just go for it. Yeah, and I just felt like there's someone um, that feels like, you know what, I'm the only one. I'm the only one in my <laughs> school praying. I'm the only one standing. But sometimes all the Lord needs is one. It was one person mm -hmm. who took that kettle pot and prayed under that pot. Mm -hmm. And God is calling you. He says, you are the one. I see Amen. a young lady, 14 years old. He said, you're that voice. In, in Jesus' name, I pray that over you now. Amen. Yeah. Jump in there, Will. Yeah, and I just see on, on historically black college campuses right now, prayer furnaces being raised up, I see them ra being raised up in Tuskegee, Morehouse, others across, uh, across this nation. I also see them being raised up in Spelman. I also see uh, houses of prayer being raised up in colleges and universities, even in, in England, uh, parts of Europe. There, there's some of you there uh, who, who have connected to what God did with Sunday at, at Elijah, and God wants to raise you up to be the next one to go into these rough places from, uh, from your country there in England, to go into Russia, to go in rough places in Albania, to be sent as missionaries, intercessory missionaries that are going to start apostolic movements in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Cindy, this is exciting because the, I, I'm sensing Europe that there's a special anointing yeah. on yeah. Europe right now. Yeah. And, and as you're watching, you may be saying to yourself, this is what I was sensing. There are people who are watching, they're saying to themselves, well, there's no one in my generations that even prayed that I'm aware of. That's the whole issue. There are people in your generations that prayed for you and you don't even know it. You can know this. You don't have to know it because, I, uh, because even if you didn't have knowledge of it, you need to know that there were people that were praying for you. You wouldn't be where you are today if those people hadn't been praying for you. Right. So start your own kettle tour if you want, if you want to do it. In other words, if there's not been something that you know in the generations, establish something in the generations. This is your call today. You're watching today. Look what God can do and what he did in this kettle through generations. Start it today. There's someone watching, you're a young woman, and you're just going, I want to preach the gospel too. And you just can't believe it. Right now, here I am. I'm talking straight to you. And the Lord says, yes, preach the gospel. God is calling you, anointing you to preach. And I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for the anointing yes. of the Holy Spirit to fall upon you now. Mm. Just take it right now. Take that anointing. Take the fire. Take the glory. Let the anointing of God fall on you. Do haven't you got and something? I just, I just see a spe specifically England. I feel like in England that you're hearing this thing about William. There's a William Wilberforce anointing yes. for abolitionists mm. that God wants to release out of England. And I saw, and I'm stepping out on a limb here, but I saw someone by the name of William. That's not an accident. You're watching this program. Yeah. There's <laughs> legacy even in your bloodline. And we just want to release that 
abolitionist call to justice for life in England and a revival amongst teenagers in Jesus' name. I tell you, I, the Lord is showing me that there are people that you say, Lord, I want to go to Bible school. I don't have the money. And the Lord just says, the money is there. Just believe. Go ahead. Step out. God's going to provide the money. I see that there's somebody else watching. And it's very interesting. Your name is George. And, and you have just been praying to God. I, I literally see someone named George on your knees praying. You're just crying out to the Lord Jesus. And the Lord just says to you, I have heard your prayers. Don't be afraid. Provision is going to be there for you. Do you have mm. something to add? Yeah, to that? Cindy, you know, what, what I'm sensing is this, uh, what I was hearing was that it's, it's has skipped a generation. Now, what, here's what it means. There's someone out there, maybe so, someone's out there where you have heard in, in your generations, but uh, not your parents, but before that, your grandparents and before ha, were very spiritual and had a very close connection with God. Mm -hmm. and, and yet it skipped a generation. It's like your parents and it saddens you. Your parents didn't have that. And so it's been a tugging uh, in your life. Listen, take what God has for you reestablish the heritage in your generation and your children. Your children are waiting for you to step into what God has for you. Amen. Well, this is show. It's gone fast, fast, fast. They always do. But we're going to ask Will and Havlin. They're going to come back. We're going to do another several shows for them. There's a lot you can know on God Knows. As a thank you for your special gift of $20 or more, Mike and Cindy want to send you a copy of History Makers, by Will Ford and Dutch Sheets. They also want you to have a copy of Cindy's CD, How to Hear God's Voice, a practical and biblical message that explains how to discern God's voice and follow His leading. It's the faithful financial support of friends like you that enables Cindy and Mike to take the prophetic Word of God to so many searching hearts around the world. And your gifts help keep the God Knows television program coming to you every week. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. And as our thank you, we'll send you Will Ford's and Dutch Sheets book, History Makers, along with Cindy's message on CD, How to Hear the Voice of God. Call or click now with your special gift of $20 or more. Did God do something miraculous in your life that you'd like to share with us? Send us your story when you write us at story at godknows.tv. We face a critical moment of decision. Without a change in direction, the United States will accelerate into unstoppable decline. Will this nation remain a city set on a hill or is it headed over a cliff? It's time to make a stand. That's why we must take two critical steps to pray and to act. The United States Reformation Prayer Network is a 50 state union bringing you strategic state and national information that you'll need for effective targeted prayer. With your free membership at usrpn.org, you'll have the source for key intelligence that will help put your prayer into focused action. USRPN.org has scores of contributors and thousands of members, and USRPN.org will keep you aware and armed. Sign up now. Registration is free. USRPN.org. Make a stand. Stand for right. God Knows is an outreach of Generals International and is only made possible through the generous donations of partners like you. Thank you. For more resources and information on how to partner with us, please visit our website at www.godknows.tv or write us at P.O. Box 340, Red Oak, Texas 75154.